Well, I've just taken, uh, sorry, I've just surface ground it on the 272 and then I took some weight off the blade, ready for heat treating. And I just sort of started sanding, hand sanding the handle up because it was kind of a 60 grit finish off the surface grinder. And I, I just suddenly thought, I don't know why I'm doing this when I've got Herbert sat outside doing nothing. So I've come on to Herbert to clean up the handle prior to quench. But he'll also get everything beautiful and flat. I'll probably run him over this again after heat treating. He gives you a lovely finish. So I'm going to clean. Just uh, sorry, just degrease this now. Get some anti-scale on. Well, since the last clip all went well, I've heat treated both blades. Both came out 65. Uh, there was a slight warp into in this blade, uh, which I got out during temper. I also blew back the spine of this blade, so I've got a hard edge around 62 and a soft back. The other knife is just doing one more temper cycle at the moment because it's just a little bit too hard. It's about 59.560 Rockwell so I'm just giving it one more temper cycle just to take a bit of the hardness off it. So I'm going to etch this now and I will bring you back when it's had a little etch. Oh you can see already actually the pattern's starting to come out. 4-0 grade wire wool which I'm just going to use literally to remove oxides nothing more very gently I want to keep the nickel layer really shiny hence why I will be taking some 1200 grit paper after two or three of these uh, etches and flattening the tops off the nickel you really have to use a very hard backed flat sanding block on this. So if you use anything soft it will go down into the 1095 layer and it will just undo all your hard work. And I'm not sanding hard on this. Well the chef knife is currently sat in hot coffee and I've Caught up with the little knife, the little uh, outdoor knife. I've ground the bevels. The Rockwell hardness is beautiful at 58.5. So I've ground the bevels, cleaned it up, uh, and we're now going into ferric chloride. So it's time to get handles on, and I have attached uh, some G10, epoxied it on last night onto these Burr Elm scales. I pretty much always do my handles like this. First of all I just drill through on one side and locate the pins. Then I get the matching piece, place it on there and then I drill through from that side locating the pins in as I drill. And once the handles in place On there I mark it then I go to the bandsaw and I cut all that flashing off the outside and pretty much like that so kind of I'll just go and shape the fronts now and I'll reference my lines on there and I'll take that always take it just a tad bigger you know and just after cutting them, I put them on the sander at a slight, just at a slight angle. I put them in the vise now and sand them, clean, polish them, finish them completely. Ready to glue up, epoxy mixed and warmed up so that it flows into all those little tiny holes which are to bond the liner 
better to the wood underneath. It's just formed little tiny pegs. Uh, it's 2 degrees centigrade outside, it is absolutely bone chilling and it is 24 degrees in the workshop, thank you to the rocket stove. So I'm down to my t-shirt, I'm so hot. <laughs> right, I start off with a piece of 3.5 millimeter veg tan leather and I basically just cut my profile out uh, with a Stanley knife. So with just my little pushing tool I've just kind of pushed and manipulated the leather and just kind of put dots and markings in to just kind of highlight different areas and I'm just going to use this little stippling tool, I don't know what it is, uh, to just outline around the bird and just make it more stand out off the face of the leather. I kind of got to that, which which is about as best as it's going to get. Uh, that looks okay. Kind of looks like a bird of prey, doesn't it? Sat on, a, sat on its prey. Anyway, so I like the way the chef knife came out. It feels so nice. And the balance is, again, is just... The balance on it is just beautiful it's so finely balanced that right on the ricasso hardly any weight to it nice flexible spine have you ever seen a knife cut through a vice <laughs> there we go A little bit of your tired see. With the logo. I just love Elm Bell, man. Beautiful. That same elm burl for the handle. Fire steel again with some elm burl. Nice little sheath. Just plain on the back. I've showed you this before, but that's. Uh, that's Albert's axe as well, that's his Damascus axe which will be going with his other items with an ash handle and a buffalo horn end cap. And with a leather half protector there. You see the Damascus on the end of that. Chef knife and hunting knife are all done. I just have to make a, a block for that. Um, probably I'll do that today. I'll make him an oak block up just to keep the knife in. Um, but I do love that. I do love that knife. God, it is sharp. I've also got another build knife which I did sometimes about five or six weeks ago now, and that's a knife for Z Outdoors. Desert iron wooden bone on the handle with scrimshaw and some brass elements and bits and pieces on it. Nice knife. I have got another couple of billets here which I'm going to be working on in the next couple of weeks. Uh, there's a kind of wild feather pattern. And this is a crushed W feather. Do like that one. Really do like that. So I'm going to be turning these into blades 
and uh, I'll probably put these for sale on my website in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to finish off the katana. It would be a shame, as you all say, to cut it in half and make two tantos out of it. So he will get done. It's already a really nice weight and I think when it gets a handle on that it will be sweet. What I'm going to do in the next couple of weeks uh, is I'm going to show you how I, make, how I make my beautiful pizza dough. It really is good pizza dough. And then I'm going to cook the pizza on my little rocket stove pizza oven and I'm going to go more into detail on how that little pizza oven works. Um, so if you wanted to make one, you could do. It is a very good pizza oven. It gets easily up to 450, 500 degrees in no time at all, 15, 20 minutes, depending on the fuel you're burning. So I'll go into depth with a video on that. Um, anyone who's wants to know how the new riser is working on my rocket stove is it's completely faultless. I was looking down into it last night, the whole tube was just glowing yellow, it was beautiful, the, the workshop's been lovely and warm. So the rocket stove riser issue has, looks like it's been solved with that uh, lightweight, with that lightweight refractory brick. Um, I'll do an update on my pigeons because people keep asking me about my pigeons. Yes, I've still got them, I've not got as many, there are... There are 12 or 13 hens and there are 7 cockbirds. Not done any breeding this year, they've not been out much this year. Uh, they're my pets, but they're all doing good, you'd be pleased to know. I want to make some Damas a Damascus finger ring. So I'm going to forge a billet and I'm going to have to really do a high layer count and probably a twisted bar as well in order to get a really nice pattern on the ring. So that's something I want to do. I wouldn't mind making some other little bits and pieces of Damascus jewellery as well, necklaces and such. But apart from that for now, that is it and I'll see you uh, in the next video quite soon. Thank you patrons. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching and please hit the thumb! Alright guys, see you soon.